Okay, our goal here is to write a number in standard form and then turn it into something that might help us. Scientific notation. Standard form is something you typically see. You write numbers where each digit tells you a different place value. It's basically the standard way of writing a number. And we want to uh, write it in scientific notation. We don't want to change the number, we just want to write it in a different way. The answer here is going to be 1.1 times 10 to the seventh. But let me break this down. We have to, first of all, realize a couple of really important things. 10 to the first is just 10 to 10. 10 to the second is 100. 10 to the third is 1,000. 10 to the fourth is 10,000. 10 to the fifth is 100,000. Now you might be wondering what I'm doing here. Maybe you see a pattern. How do I instantly know 10 to the 6 is a million? Look at this. Each zero matches the exponent. <coughs> so for 10 to the first, we know I'll have a 1 with 1 zero. For 10 to the second, we'll have a 1 with 2 zeros. For 10 to the third, we'll have a 1 with 3 zeros. This is going to greatly help us in scientific notation. To realize that 10 to the number that power will just give you the number of zeros you need. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say we have 30,000. Okay, scientific notation. I'll abbreviate SN. So standard form SF to scientific notation SN. Well, we know we have to use something times 10 to some power. Why? Because in scientific notation, we use powers of 10, always. That's the form. It'll help us out. Why will it help us? Based on this pattern right here, that the exponent tells you the number of zeros. Now here, the first number, a rule we have to follow is this first number, we have to use one from here, and it has to be between 1 and 10. But not equal to 10. So if we choose the number 3, well, that means we took the decimal point, 30,000. There's a decimal point here, even though we don't write it. And we took it and moved it all the way here. And we have just the number 3. So we moved it four places. So this is like saying 3 times 10 to the 4th. And that makes sense if you think about it for a second. 10 to the 4th is 10,000. So when you have 30,000, you have three 10,000s. And that's 30,000. Another example. Let's say we have $50 million. OK, what do we do? Well, it has to be times some power of 10. And the first number has to be used from here and has to be between 1 and 10, but not including 10. So let's use 5. 5 is between 1 and 10. There's a decimal point right there. So originally, the decimal point was right here. Remember, we don't always write it, but that's where it is. And to make 5, we need to take it, this number, and make it really small and move it all the way here. And how far do we move it? We moved it 3, 6, 7 places. So. Another way of writing 50 million is to say 5 times 10 to the 7th power. Let's say I had 500 million. Now, if 50 million was 5 times 10 to the 7th, and now we added one more zero, that also means we move the decimal place one place further. 3, 6, 8. So a quicker way of writing 500 million is 5 times 10 to the 8th. And notice, maybe that saves a little bit of time. What if we had 500 billion? Well, now, instead of writing this long number, we just know that there are 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 zeros. Here there were 8 zeros, so the power was 8. Here there were 7 zeros, so the power was 7. So that's going to be a power of 11. And again, we just use it a 5, 5 times 10 to the 11th power. Now sometimes, if we go back to our original example, we don't just have one number. In some other examples, it was just one number sitting here. 
So you might have to take that number and those numbers and turn it into something between 1 and 10. The idea is that you have the number 11, that's too big. So where do you put the decimal point for 11 to make it between 1 and 10? Well, we can't move it here. Oops, excuse me. We can't move it in front of the 1. If we move it in front of the 1, we have the number 0 0.11. 0 0.11 would not work in scientific notation. It's smaller than 1. We can't move it here because we have 11, so we can only move it here. 1.1, that's between 1 and 10. And that's exactly what I did here. And then I said, well, how far did I move the decimal point from its original spot over here to between the ones? How far did I move it? Well, 3, 6, 7 places. So my answer is 1.1 times 10 to the 7th. A couple of other things to think about when dealing with scientific notation is that negative numbers really have no impact on this whole process. Let's say I had negative 11,000 versus positive 11,000. Well, positive 11,000, 1.1. Again, I have two ones. So let's move the decimal point from here to between the ones because I need to make a number between 1 and 10. 1.1 1 .1 times 10, we use powers of 10, to the 1, 2, 3, fourth power. If we're dealing with a negative, use the same process. The decimal point goes between the two ones. So we get 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the fourth. Only now, instead of 1.1, .1, it's negative 1.1. And why does this work? Well, let's go back to our definition of scientific notation. It's some number times 10 to some power. This first number, I should have said the absolute value of this number is between 1 and 10, but not equal to 10. So that's a basic idea of positive and negative scientific notation. What happens when we have really small numbers? Because this will help us. Well, let's go back to our 10 chart. 10 to the 0 is, if you follow the pattern, there will be 0 zeros now, so it's just 1. 10 to the negative 1 continues this pattern by moving the decimal point. Notice the decimal point's moving slowly to the left. So now it's going to move one more place this way. 10 to the negative 2 equals 0 0.01. It basically means divide 1 by 10 twice. 10 to the negative 3 is 0 0.001. 10 to the negative 4th is 0 0.0001. So now, I mean, I see a little bit of a different pattern here. When we had positive exponents, that tells you, with the base of 10, that tells you the exact number of zeros. Now, the absolute value of that exponent, if it's 1, well, there will be one less zero than one. So there will be zero ones. When the absolute value is two, there's one zero. When the absolute value is three, there's two zeros. When the absolute value of the negative exponent is four, there are three zeros. So there's always one less zero than the exponent when you're dealing with decimals and powers of 10. So you might get a question like this. What if you had point zero 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 one? What is this in scientific notation? Well, the first number has to be between 1 and 10. Let's use the 1. So that means I have to move the decimal point all the way back here to get 1. How far did I move it? Well, before we were moving decimals and numbers to the left. Now we're going to the right. So we do 10 to the negative power instead of the positive power. And how far do we go? Well, just as far as we jumped. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and don't forget to count past the number, and that's negative 5. Often they'll ask a question like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then something like that. What is this in scientific notation? And they'll offer choices where they use 16, but we can't use 16. Remember, you have to make a number between 1 and 10. So take that decimal point and put it between the 1 and the 6. Then we get 1.6 and we're okay. Now, what power of 10 do we use? Well, count how far we hopped. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. But this is a really small number, so we're going to deal with negative exponents. That's the basic idea of turning standard form numbers into scientific notation.